playing online and on smart devices. Now on London Scotty Radio, it's podcast time. I'm George Matlock. Hello and welcome to Scotty MOT, none other than the first of 2022. I'm George Mattel, your host for today's programme. This is hosted by London Scotty Club, as ever. And I'm really delighted to tell you we've got on the line and a very big Happy New Year to uh, Jackie Ash from Ashgate Grooming in Fivehead, Somerset. Welcome. Hello. Thank you very much and Happy New Year to you all as well. So I hope you had a festive time, but I I believe you were working, weren't you, over the uh, festive season? Yeah, our kennels are open um, throughout the year. So we had quite a lot of dogs staying with us while their owners were out partying. So we were, quite, we were kept quite busy, but, you know, it's a nice position to be in where they, you know, they trust us with their dogs. Yeah, but tell us the truth. We really want to know this. Were the dogs partying too? Um, no. <laughs> okay. they, did, they did get a special turkey dinner, though, if I'm honest. And oh, they right. did all go home with a, with a treat. Fantastic. So they did, yeah, so they did get a bit of a party. Oh, okay. good for them, good for them, excellent. All right, and do you have, just out of interest, Do you are the kennels open to all kinds of dogs or any or particular types of dogs? No, they're open to all, all types of dogs, mm. as long as their temperament is good. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we do have to do a bit of a, um, a selection with temperament, but people mm. are really, really good and they're very honest, and if they've got a problem, they tell us. And as long as we know... Mm then we're quite happy to work with people. It's, you know, we just don't like being surprised because it's not fair on the dog or us. No, of course not. Um, but no, we, we're very lucky. We have some really, really lovely customers and, and lovely dogs that stay with us. Excellent. All right, fantastic. So uh, on to the new year. Now, it starts in earnest here on Scotty MOT. Um, we've got a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, what The first one, um, I don't know how to describe this. It's a bit of an awkward subject but I, I think it's fair to say that both questions on today's program are very much of, of a behavioral type you right. might you might uh, care to differ I don't know we'll find out in a moment when I place the questions to you so the first question that we've got is about what I describe as involuntary urination and by this we're talking about a dog that's aged in this case seven years of age he's a he's a black Scottish terrier um, he 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 lives in the same house since he was a puppy, uh, since he was basically two months old, um, and in the last year he's taken a fancy to lifting his leg up and doing a little whoopsie pee pee when he so chooses. Usually against an upright uh, object, it could be you know a carrier bag on the floor, or it could be a box. Uh, from Amazon or whoever or whatever it is, and um, he he often sneaks off into a corridor to do this. Um, what's going on there? It, this is a really weird thing because it's it's something that's occurred quite recently. Right. Okay. Um, anything like this, where you've got a dog that suddenly or starts acting out of normal character, is always worrying, and it's always it is quite difficult to to pin it down as to exactly what it is. If the dog was mine, um, the first thing that I would do is to get the dog checked by, over by the vet. There could be a medical reason um, why the dog is doing it. Um, they do suffer from kidney stains, Cushing's disease, diabetes, all those sort of things, which will give them poorer control than normal. Um, but from what you've said, it sounds as if this could be more behavioural. Um, but I would certainly advise the owner, one, go 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 to the vet and make sure that there is no medical issue to start with. If your vet gives your dog a a clean bill of health, then you do need to start looking at the behavioural side of it. And there's quite a few things Mm. that you can immediately do. First one is, is the dog being left alone more than it normally is? Is it becoming anxious? Is this a control thing? Are you doing something different? So it feels, that dog feels, I need to control this situation. And if he wants to control it, the best way of doing it is to mark his territory by lifting his leg. Yeah, yeah. The opposite I, end of the scale is if he's submissive or he feels he's, he's going to get a punishment. You know, so I think you've got to work all the way through these things, not just immediately say, oh, yes, I think it's that. Right, OK. Um, what I do know is that the dog has been to the vet. The vet said okay. that it is not Cushing's. Uh, they've right. checked their, their organs and done a few blood tests good, and things of that good. sort. Perfect. So So that, that's the good news, um, yes, as perfect. much as we know. Um, there is another dog in the house that sometimes likes to bully a little bit. I'm wondering okay. if it's anxiety. Yeah. 
Um, any, if a dog is feeling bullied, um, then yes, I would say that that's certainly the one, the route to start looking down first of all. Um, it's a, any dog that's being dominated will do one of two things. It'll either retreat into itself and it therefore could urinate because it's worried or it could be trying to push himself, you know, back up in the pecking order and he's doing that by marking his territory. Mm. Now, you mentioned things like the Amazon box or something like that's arrived. If it's something, a new object that isn't normally there, mm -hmm. then that is typical territory marking. Yeah. Yeah. If it's something that's there all the time and they're ignoring it, you, do, you, do you understand the difference? I mean, it's like the mm. new item has arrived in the house. I need to quickly wee up that first. Yeah. Because then my partner in crime knows I'm the dominant one. It's also habitual. And that's the way they think, you know. Mm. But it's also habitual. So it, it could be a new item. Um, and, and, yep. and as I say, it tends to be, you know, it's not, it's not a wall. Um, it's, yep. it's got to be some object. So it's got to be stand, yes. something that's standing there um, yes. on the floor. Yes. Uh, but, yep. but it is also habitual in the sense that the dog is smart enough to sometimes go into um, the bathroom, which is tiled, and then okay. will um, find the same location. Usually, it's something right. like a, a basket on the on on in 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 the in the bathroom, and will yep. stand nearby and release quite a puddle. Yeah. This dog also drinks in droves. Drinks a large amount. It's almost like an obsessional amount of of water, okay. and then we'll yep. carry it around, and then we'll do this. And that's despite yep. you know opening the the door, letting them go into the garden, and also all that all that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it sounds behavioural, you know, and certainly if you have, you know, if the, the vet's given the dog a clean bill of health. Um, I, what I would do is I would limit the access that the dog has to the areas that he's, you know, that's concerning you. So if the dog is doing it more, you know, if there is something new in the hallway, you know, then the, keep the dog into the kitchen for a while. Find it, mm. Try and focus in on when he's doing it Mm -hmm. And that will give you more of an answer as to why he's doing it, rather right. than just thinking every time I open a door he's going to run in there and, you know, and pee up something. Don't allow him to do it. You know, give him that control, um, and then you can you can learn a bit more. If worst comes to worst and you can't sort it out, then a behaviourist is the next point. Right. Okay. Okay. That's great. Thank you very much. That sounds like really good advice. So thanks very much for that. I should also just remind uh, listeners that um, Jackie is uh, somebody who's got a lot of experience of canines uh, running, a, 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 in this case, a kennel of her own and a grooming service. Um, but you're not a qualified vet. So, of course, any advice that you're giving is based on your own personal experience. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if people are concerned, or they should certainly in any case always talk to the vet first. And in this case, the scenario that we've just painted is of a dog where that that's, was done, that the vet was consulted first. Good. OK, Good. Brill. Um, now, just to um, uh, show you all that we, you know, p people are getting the message now that they can send in their questions to us. Uh, you don't even have to be a, L a London Scotty Club member. You can be any anyone who's got a Scottish Terrier uh, who's who follows us. You're very welcome to get in touch with us. Um, but this next question that we've got actually does come from a member. Um, and I can tell you that they have used the contact form. So this is what we ask everyone to do is to go to our website, which is londonscotty.club, and then go to the contact tab and then just fill out with as much information as you possibly can. You can also attach photographs if those would be of help and those might be able to help um, Jackie uh, or Kath who are our helpers on this show on Scotty MOT to answer those questions. So you can also attach photographs uh, if that will help and uh, you know give us as much information as you can as has done Leander who's kindly uh, written the following and I, and I will read it all if that's okay because she's been quite detailed about the the situation and i find it in places a little bit amusing but i can understand why for her this has gone beyond a joke and it's now obviously quite serious so she's got little robbie robbie is 10 months old and has a tendency to come to a complete halt if he spots any other dogs when we are out walking he lies down as low as possible and will remain in this position until the other dog is close at which point he usually gets up and greets in a friendly way. The other dogs can be on the far end of a big field and Robbie will still lie down and refuse to budge an inch. He's pretty hefty, so gentle tugging of his lead gets nowhere. 
I hope that doesn't mean he's a bit on the large side. But anyway, a bit hefty is the, the term there. Um, he even does it with dogs he knows and loves to play with and has also started lying down on pavements when people are approaching. This is beginning to drive us slightly nuts. We've tried treats, luring him with bits of cheese or chicken, but he absolutely will not move. I wonder if it's a confidence thing, but he seems pretty unfazed by most things so far and is usually well behaved with other dogs. We mostly walk him on a long line as we are trying to train recall and if he's off lead and spots other dogs, well, he usually races over, hoping to play. Any advice on how to deal with this endless lying down would be very gratefully received. You know, people are beginning to ask if he's tired. Jackie, right. over to you. Mm. OK. <laughs> Gosh, this is a quite a complicated one, to be honest with you. And I'd have to start off exactly the same way as I did with the other question. You know, medical first. Um, sen I'm, what, what I'm thinking of medically here is, are his senses okay? Mm -hmm. right, has something happened? That, is his eyesight all right? Is his hearing all right? <clears throat> In the fact that, is he focusing okay so he can see what's coming towards him? Um, if that's been, you know, eliminated and you're quite confident that actually he's actually, he, you know, he's perfectly okay, it's, it's a behavioural, again, it's a behavioural issue of something that's, you know, that's creeping in and it's then actually how to deal with it is, is the issue. Now, I, I'm not a qualified behaviourist and there are hundreds of different ways that people deal with these type of things. If he was mine, again, and I can only say from, you know, owning Scotty's what I, what I would do, you've got a very big stubborn streak in there. Um, and I think regardless of what you do, pulling them, tempting them, nothing's going to move them if they, if they don't want to move. What I would do is I would cut out the long lead straight away. Um, I don't think that that will be, will be helping. And I think concentrate on a recall in a completely different way. It's a different subject. I'd have him on a normal mm. lead um, so that the dog feels he is under control and you've got that dog next to you where you can give him confidence if he's, got a, if he, you know, if he's lacking in it. I would then approach, get people to approach him and I would do so and then give him a command. Teach him to watch you is a really good one. So if you can make eye contact with your dog <clears throat> and you can look directly at your dog and when he's watching you eye, eye to eye for just a couple of seconds, reward him with a treat mm -hmm. and say the words, watch me. Now, he will very, very, very soon, because Scotty's a very bright, he will very quickly understand that actually I'm going to make eye contact. I get something out of this. And when you're in that situation where you've got a problem that you think, oh, hold on, there's somebody coming towards us, he may do it, before it happens, turn the dog away from that situation, so turn around, get the dog to watch you, give the treat, and even if you have to keep doing it until that person gets close enough, mm. then let him say hello to the other dog and again reward him. Now, that's how I would approach it. Um, whether that's what a behaviourist would do, I don't know. Um, but I've had Westies and Scotties, which have both suddenly decided that they don't like doing things. Mm, mm. And the only way I know with those particular terriers is to coax them out of it rather than force them out of it. Right, right. Um, what's, uh, this is where the, the power of knowledge is important. And uh, obviously, uh, we, we encourage people uh, anyone who's submitting their questions, we're very grateful for, by the way, uh, is that they, they give as much information as they possibly can. So sure, one thing, sure. one thing that, that is missing from this particular question, unfortunately, is whether this is something that has developed recently or yeah. whether this has been something that Robbie has been suffering from basically since he was first um, brought to this house, I presume, yeah. as a puppy of two or three months old. Um, how old is, the, how he's old 10 is months. he again? He's 10 months ten old. Months. Yeah, but I mean, it sounds it sounds to me as if you know something's happened in his head. You know, something mm. is worrying him, and he's thinking, "I'm not sure how to approach this situation." Yeah. Now it could be because of that long lead, mm. he feels disconnected from you, and he's not getting that confidence from you. I, I, you know, it could be one of those, which is why I'm saying 
I would drop one thing at a time, right. go for that one because it's an obvious one, mm. and then try. If it's making no difference, then obviously you have to try other things. But um, So it's like a process I mean, of elimination is what you're saying. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it definitely is. It definitely is. You've got to try and get into their head as to w- w- what is actually, you know, what, what are they seeing? What are they focusing on that's so strange for them? Why won't he move? Mm. You know, and it could just be down to, you know, stubbornness. He just doesn't want to. That's a different thing altogether, you know, but you have to try and work out what, what is actually going on here, you yeah. know, and try and eliminate a few things. And I would go back to square one if it was me and start, you know, as I say, doing the watch command, get him enjoying going out with you, walking next to you, talk to him all the time, keep his focus on you. And then when he's enjoying himself, he might just forget about these other behaviour issues. Mm. I'm, I'm almost hoping that the cause uh, is something that's very recent. So something that ha- has built up over time or something that, that has suddenly started to happen. Mm. In which case, you, as you say, you can work, it's a bit like reverse engineering. You can work backwards Absolutely. and take exactly. away the lead first and then see if there are other possible reasons. Absolutely. And it goes back again to the, to the question that you had before with the inappropriate urinating Mm. you know it's the same thing you could almost go back to puppy training go back to square one you know why are they doing these things there all these behavior issues will come about because of something Mm. our problem is is that we don't speak the dog's language and that dog is trying to tell us we've we're the ones with the problem we've got to try and work out what it is they're trying to tell us of course it's that bit more difficult if indeed as i fear might be the case from this question and i say i this is just me trying to put two and two together here um, mm-hmm. is that the, the problem has been chronic has been ongoing since puppyhood in which yep. case there's a rather lot of history about 10 months of it that needs to be yep. unwound to actually find what could be yes. the cause yeah and in fairness you know the owners will be getting you know, very frustrated with it. There's nothing worse. You know, you're just trying to go out and have a nice time with your dog mm. and then they, they do whatever it is that you don't want them to do. Get some help. You know, there are really good trainers out there um, and get, go find, you know, find somebody to help you. It's no, you know, it's no embarrassment if people have whatever problem with their dogs. There's always an expert out there. Mm. Just Just try and find them and... Um, recommendations talk to the vets and say who do you recommend to do some training with us i think that's a very good place to start is to ask the vet i I always Um, think the vets know everybody you know and they really do know they build up fabulous relationships with with people yeah now Um, a while ago on this program you did tell us about a very useful um website for for grooming um um, and that's a really good sort of one-stop shop to find somebody um is there such a thing for dog behaviorists as far as you know I'll see if I can find out, you know, if there are some good websites that people can, you know, can, can go to for, ge- yeah. for general things. So, yeah, I'll try and do that for you. Yeah. yeah, But in any case, I would say that even if anyone does find such a website, there may well be people scurrying around on the internet right now as we're, as this program is uh, unfolding. Um, I think the, the advice would be that even if you find somebody online, you should still check in with your vet. Have they heard of this, uh, this person or this company? Mm. Do, do they have any views? Is there anyone locally that they would recommend instead? Yeah, I mean, I would always try and go local if you possibly can. Mm. Um, you know, there are, we all know in every, in every walk of life, there are people just out to make money. And what we want to try and do is to, to point people in the direction where they're going to get solid advice yeah. um, for their money, if you like. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, be, be careful. Go by local recommendation if you possibly can, um, you know, and, then, and, tr- and go from there great i think that's very good advice as well again thank you for that so uh, we'll see you in about a month's time jackie yeah, ash sure. thank you so much for joining us on the show thanks for listening to london scotty radio this and all our podcasts are available online at londonscotty.club if you liked it be sure to subscribe to us from your favorite podcast player app also visit us on youtube for fun videos and if you have a scottish terrier in london or nearby be sure to join us